Good day everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel and for our week 8 topic, we're gonna talk about proofs. Max 19 and 20 with the learning competencies, 17 uses inductive or deductive reasoning in an argument, 18 writes a proof direct and indirect. The lesson that we will discuss is about proofs. Reasoning is a logical way of thinking. Sometimes, you base your reasoning from different data gathered or from the arguments. To reason out means to give conclusion or proof to establish a fact or the truth of a statement. You can use letter to represent hypothesis and conclusion. For this lesson, you can use P to represent the hypothesis and Q for the conclusion. The conditional statement, if P, then Q, in symbol, read as P implies Q. The one-sided arrow is read as implies. Now let's take an example. If the moon shines bright, then stars can be seen in the sky. So the first statement is the hypothesis or our P. And the second statement is the conclusion or Q. So this is an example of conditional statement. A statement that can be written in the form if P then Q where P is the hypothesis and Q is the conclusion or P implies Q. Alright? Now, let's try to create converse statement and to form the converse, we need to switch P and Q. We need to interchange or swap the hypothesis and the conclusion of the original statement. So, if the stars can be seen in the sky, then the moon shines bright. So, yung first statement natin is our Q and the second statement will be our P. So remember that the converse statement can be written in the form if P, then Q, or Q implies P. Okay? So if both the conditional and converse statements are true, then a biconditional statement can be written symbolically if P, then Q, and Q, then P, or P, if and only if Q. So for biconditional statements, we use a double arrow, so here, since the truth works in both directions. Okay? Let's take an example. Statement x equals negative 5 and absolute value of x equals 5. So A writes P implies Q in words. B write Q implies P in words. C write P if and only if Q in words. And then, try to answer is the statement true? So, for our solution, P implies Q. If X equals negative 5, then absolute value of X is equal to 5. P, Q implies P. If absolute value of X equals 5, then X equals negative 5. And then C, P, if and only if Q, X equals negative 5, if and only if absolute value of X equals so this is a false statement since it is not only negative 5 with absolute value of 5 but also 5. Example 3. Given P or the hypothesis, points A, B, C are coplanar points. Q or the conclusion, points A, B, and C are on the same plane. So write the following symbols in words. So A, Q implies P. Or the converse statement. If points A, B, and C are on the same plane, then points A, B, and C are coplanar. B. P implies Q or conditional statement. If points A, B, and C are coplanar, then points A, B, and C are on the same plane. How about the biconditional statement? Or P, if and only if Q. 
points A, B, and C are coplanar if and only if points A, B, and C are on the same plane. So this is a valid statement based on the definition of coplanar points. Points that lie in the same plane. Alright? Most people base their conclusion on patterns they observe or from given statements. Example, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 1 plus 3 equals 4, 3 plus 3 equals 6, 3 plus 5 equals 8, 5 plus 5 equals 10, 5 plus 7 equals 12. So what can you observe about the addends? What about the sum? Alright, all the addends are odd numbers and all the sum are even. So for our conclusion or conjecture, Adding two odd numbers, the sum is even number. Now let's proceed to inductive and deductive reasoning. The two major types of reasoning are deductive and inductive. Inductive reasoning uses specific examples arrive at a general rule, generalization, or conclusion, while deductive reasoning is a type of logical reasoning that uses accepted facts to reason in a step-by-step -step manner until we arrive at the desired statement. There are two laws of deductive reasoning to consider. Law of Detachment and Law of Syllogism Law of Detachment If P implies Q is a true conditional statement, P is true and Q is true. Example, CJ knows that if he will not study his module in math a day before the test, he will not get a good score in the test. CJ did not study his module in math today, so he concludes that he will not get a good score for tomorrow's test. So analyze if the arguments are valid. Arguments Premise if P then Q if CJ will not study his module in math a day before the test, then he will not get a good score. For the premise or P, CJ did not study his module in math a day before the test. And for the conclusion or Q, therefore, he will not get a good score in the test. So if P, then Q is true. And P and Q are true. So the arguments are valid. Next example, if n is an odd number, then the remainder is 1 when divided by 2. 11 is an odd number, therefore, the remainder is 1 when 11 is divided by 2. So, premise, if p then q, if n is an odd number, then the remainder is 1 when divided by 2. The premise or p, 11 is an odd number. The conclusion or Q, therefore, the remainder is 1 when 11 is divided by 2. So, the arguments are all valid. Now, let's discuss the law of syllogism. If P implies Q and Q implies R are true conditional statements, then P implies R is true. Example If Joy visits B call, then she will spend a day in a so this is the major premise. If she will stay a day in Albay, then she will go cut sour roommates. So this is the minor premise. If Joy visits Bicol, then she will spend a day in Albay. If she will stay a day in Albay, then she will go cut sour roommates. So, P. Joy visited Bicol. Q. She will spend a day in Albay. And R. She will visit Kadzawa rulings. So, since P implies Q is true and Q implies R is true, by the law of syllogism, you can conclude that P implies R is true. That is, if Joy visits Bicol, then she will visit Kadzawa ruins. So, this will be our conclusion. And the conclusion is valid since the two premises are true. Example number two, if you eat vegetable, then you become healthy. This is the major premise. If you become healthy, then you will not get sick. This is the minor premise. So P, you eat vegetable. Q, you become healthy. R, you will not get sick. 
So, by the law of syllogism, the conclusion P implies R. So, if you eat vegetable, then you will not get sick. So, the two premises are valid. Example number 3. If a triangle has 260 angles, then the triangle is equiangular. If a triangle is equiangular, then it is also equilateral. So for our conclusion, if a triangle has 260 angles, then it is equilateral. So this conclusion is valid since an equiangular triangle is also an equilateral triangle. There are some instances that the conclusion is not valid. Example, all animals have four legs. This is the major premise. Snake is an animal, the minor premise. Snake has four legs for the conclusion. So the conclusion is invalid since the major premise is wrong. Not all animals have four legs. To establish the validity and truthfulness of arguments is the process of proving. There are two ways of writing a proof, indirect and direct way of proving. Try to analyze the arguments of Joy and the Angel. Joy and Angel have tickets for art festival when they arrive there. Angel said, It seems that there are very few people in here. Joy said, If the art festival is today, there should be hundreds of people here, so it can't be today. Angel said, Let me see the ticket. The date on the ticket is for tomorrow, so the art festival is not today. Take note that both of them arrive at the same conclusion but in different ways. Angel's argument is an example of a direct proof, while Joy's argument is an example of an indirect proof. To further understand, direct proof is used to prove statements of the form if P then Q or P implies Q, which we can write as the symbol. This method takes an original statement P, which is assumed to be true, and is used to show directly that the other statement Q is true. The direct proof has to follow these steps. First, assume the statement P is true. Use what we know about P and other facts as necessary to deduce the other statement Q is true. That is show P implies Q is true. Example number 1. If n is an odd integer, then n squared is odd. So given p, n is an odd integer, proof q, n squared is odd. For the proof, the first step, assume that p is true. n equals 2k is even number for some integer k. So remember, even number is divisible by so, n equals 2k plus 1 is odd number for some integer k. Remember that odd number when divided by 2 has a remainder 1. So, n squared equals 2k plus 1 squared. So, squaring odd integer 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. One. Squaring a binomial, though the even coefficients of k and the constant 1 already indicate that the square of odd integer is odd. Still, we need to express it form of 2k plus 1. So, if we factor out 4k squared plus 4k plus 1 by 2, the answer is 2 times the quantity of 2k squared plus 2k plus 1. So, let m equals 2k squared plus 1. 2k. Thus, n squared equals 2m plus 1 is odd by definition of odd number. Example number 2. Given two even integers a and b, prove the sum of a plus b is even. In proving, we can use a formal proof which is a two-column proof. One column is for the statements and the other column is for reason to make the conclusion true. So, for the statement, A and B are even. So, the reason given, A equals 2M, B equals 2 So, this is the definition of even number. A plus B equals 2M plus 2 The reason, adding two integers. Next, A plus B equals 2. 
times the quantity of M plus P. The reason, factoring the GCF. Next, A plus B equals 2X. Let X equals M plus P. 2X is an even number by definition. The other way of proving is by indirect proof. Given a premise P and a conclusion Q, an indirect proof would assume that Q is false. Indirect proof is also called as proof by contradiction. Steps in indirect proofing First, assume the opposite of the conclusion of the statement. The question is, what if the conclusion is not true? Second, proceed as if this assumption is true to find the contradiction. The question is, how can you prove that the conclusion is false? Third, once there is a contradiction, the original statement is true. If you are not able to prove it, then the original statement is true. The truth and falsity of statements are opposites. If truth exists, then falsity cannot exist and vice versa. This means that a statement cannot be true and at the same time false. If the statement is proven true, then it cannot be false and the other way around. Example number 1. Given angle A and angle B are complementary angles, prove angle B is less than 90 degrees. Let's prove by indirect proof. First, assume that the opposite of the conclusion is true that is, angle B is greater than or equal to 90 degrees. Assume that the conclusion is false and that the contradiction is true. Angle A plus angle B equals 90 degrees. The definition of complementary angles, the sum of the two angles is 90 degrees. Next, angle B equals 90 degrees minus angle A. Solving for angle B by addition property of equality, B cannot be greater or equal to 90 degrees, which shows that your assumption that angle B is greater than or equal to 90 degrees is not true. Hence, the conclusion that angle B is less than 90 degrees is true. Last example. No integer m and n exists such that 4m plus 2n equals 1. By indirect proof, we have to assume that integers m and n exist and that 4m plus 2n equals 1. We start with the equation 4m plus 2n equals 1 and dividing both sides the greatest common factor of 2. So we have 2m plus n equals 1 half. So the contradiction is false. We cannot find any integer whose sum is a fraction. Thus, the original statement is true.